Hey guys, welcome back. Today is an exciting day because I'm officially doing the first garden tour of the 2022 season. This is a series I do for about six months out of the year to show you the progression and changes throughout the garden, throughout the years, months, how things evolve. So this is a really fun one for me to always look back on. So last year we actually completely ripped out our old space and remodeled the whole thing. So over the last seven months, we've put in a lot of work, but things still aren't done. We need to get some landscape fabric. We need to get rock. You can see all this exposed dirt here. There's a lot of patchy grass, but I still want to show you guys everything because there's so much going on. This spring has been way warmer than previous springs. I live in Kansas zone 6B and it's been crazy. And starting with this garlic, this garlic is way more advanced than it was last year. I was looking at last year's garden tour hence why I love filming these, just to see the differences between years. And I'm thinking this garlic might be harvesting in about a month. So let's start here. Okay, so I planted eight different varieties of hard neck garlic. So here where I live, we do get cold enough where I've never tried soft neck, but it's not advised. I think this next year I might try just because we've been having really warm winters, you know? Uh, I don't think anyone can predict weather right now. So either way, we've had a really warm spring, warmer than previous years. I've only grown garlic two years, but from my experience, this is way further along. I was only starting to get scapes uh, a whole week later, and these ones are already curling, if you can see in the video here. So I will actually be harvesting these scapes off. So when you harvest the scapes off, what that does, it puts all of its energy production into the bulb for those final weeks before harvest. So an indication that your garlic is starting to get ready to harvest is those first sets of leaves at the very bottom of the stalk will start to turn brown and die back. That is one layer of your garlic head. So once like three to four of those layers die back, you know it's time to start pulling your garlic. If more than that die back, those are the layers that keep your garlic in storage longer. That's what protects your garlic. So you don't want a lot of those to die back. If you let it go too long, it can just rot in the ground and all of your garlic goes to waste. So I am so excited about this. I planted a year's worth. Hardneck has about a six month storage life. So I will be doing a lot of garlic powder with this as well. But I'm telling you, if you don't have garlic in your garden this year, plan to plant it in October. The flavor is phenomenal and I will forever plant garlic. It's such an easy crop and I mean, look how beautiful this is. It's May and I'm gonna be harvesting like early June, which is always fun. So behind the garlic here is actually my little entryway that I'm really, really excited about. So I planted cherry tomatoes on the sides here and then in between I have some lettuce and I also have some basil over here. We got some marigolds. The basil and marigolds are to help with pests, but this little lettuce here, this gets really shaded out and I'm really excited to play around with intercropping lettuce in shaded areas like this. Just because it gets really hot here, I typically can't keep lettuce. So this is going to be a really fun experiment this year. We have my Goldie Honey Bears side by side right in the front of course and i also have all of these little blue planet flowers these are new to me it's a hybrid i believe so excited about this i think they're gonna start blooming soon they're like these little purple blue little puffy ball looking things i think it's going to add a lot of color especially the purple blue mixed with the yellow of the sunflower and the chamomile we have over here we have some oregano and also okra over here and then on this opposite side i have corn and on both sides back there i have more of those blue planets and more of goldie honey bears so i'm really excited to have cherry tomatoes all over this trellis. These are indeterminate, so they will continue to grow throughout the season. This is a variety called Pink Bumblebee. It's a beautiful striped cherry tomato, and it's going to look lovely over this trellis. Moving on over here, we have my strawberries, and oh my gosh, guys, the production on these are doing so well. So I've gotten so many questions on my decoy strawberries. Have they worked? I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. I have so many berries all over the place they haven't been messed with i've been harvesting them every morning no problem they look so good i'm so excited about having strawberries i had them in the garden last year but i had them on that fence over there and the squirrels ate them all summer and i got none of them these are starting to branch out some runners for example 
right here. So once these runners start to get established, I will also probably take these and root them somewhere else. I'm thinking I will have two strawberry beds complete next year. So we're gonna go through this area right here. I have another trellis full of San Morzano tomatoes right here. We have carrots right here and then Serrano peppers. I'm playing around with peppers. So my Serranos were really tall inside. So I went ahead and topped them. I've not topped a lot of peppers before. You can see I've kept, I've done this with all of my peppers. These three beds back here are also peppers. I've kept a few tall ones just to see. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting to show you guys the difference between the two. But moving on, look at this chamomile. So guys, this is my shining star chamomile plant. How beautiful is this? It's showing off. I need to start harvesting it. I just don't want to do it because it's so beautiful. Uh, but this reseeded itself. I did not have good luck with chamomile last year, but I left the plant and I left it to seed. It was actually right here in a small grow pot. This is the one garden bed we did not have to move. And when I saw this poking up, I think I started seeing it early February. I was like, yeah, I'm keeping that. So you guys, this has been full of ladybugs. It's so crazy how many ladybugs I found in here. I saw five the other night. Um, I also put their little bug homes over here just to help establish even more populations in this area. So I'm a huge fan of beneficial insects. Um, I have not had to release ladybugs for the last two years, but I did release for three straight years before I started having established populations, but they've been loving this chamomile. You can just, oh, it smells amazing and it's just so beautiful. I love it. Over here, we finally have my peas. They are starting to flower, but I'm really hoping we cool down a little bit. These won't last too long once it gets really, really hot and I'm shocked they are still going. They look great. They're flower. Oh, speaking of guys, we have our first pea. Let me show you. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Okay, first, look how cute the little bug home looks in between the peas and the chamomile. Cottage little house of my dreams, but for bugs. Okay, look at the cute little pea. Ah, I'm so excited. It's so cute. Uh, I'm sure I have more then. I'm gonna have to really dissect this plant now. But over here, like I was saying, I have San Morzano's planted. I have some little ones over here. I did three successions of tomatoes throughout the entire garden space. I have all Romas over here. But I also have marigolds planted in between, again, for pests. I got some red Russian kale, beets, more peas. We have calendra, and then here I have Russian mammoth and Russian Mammoth. These are the only two I've planted so far. I also planted more Goldie Honey Bears cause anywhere I had a spot, I think I planted eight Goldie Honey Bears throughout the space. Um, So we have some different zinnias right here. Ooh, guys, blueberries. Okay, I almost forgot about this. The blueberries look so good. So this is a plant, these are Rika blueberries. I believe this is my second year. The plants are finally established. Same with strawberries over there. They're not my first year planting them and I'm so excited. I'm gonna have blueberries probably in just a few short weeks. Got a hyssop plant here. And then we have this little perennial area that I'm starting. I'm going to plant lavender right there. It's downstairs. I just need to plant it. But I have multiple yarrow plants, onion chives, and then I also have some echinacea. So that's really cool. I have some more zinnias and sunflowers over here. And then we have my trellis. Okay, so this is Trellis Ellis 2.0. What I mean by that is I had Trellis Ellis last year. If you watch any of my garden tours, it did not go as planned. 2.0, I have really high hopes for. We are starting off on a good note. So I started with two of these loofah plants down in my basement. They have attached, they have grown so much in the last week. Last year, I couldn't even get my loofah to germinate. We had such a wet spring. I had such a problem with roly polies eating all of my seedlings the moment I direct sowed anything. So this year, I've had so much better luck, significantly better luck when it comes to this trellis space. Um, I've planted winter squashes, pumpkins, loofahs, cucumbers, beans. I think I also have another. Oh yeah, I, I have a few different winter squashes. So really excited about that. One of them is supposed to be vine wart resistant. One thing I'm doing, so let me know if you've done this in the comments below. I read that if you spray with an onion water, it deters squash bugs. I will try anything to deter squash bugs in this garden. I obviously can't put insect netting over a trellis area like this. I do do insect netting with my uh, zucchini over in the corner, uh, but I, yeah, again, I can't do that with the trellis. So if you've done that, please let me know. So I also have these beautiful Alaskan nasturtiums. I love Alaskan nasturtiums. They're variegated. They're so pretty. I love them. So anyway, 
I think that's enough about the trellis. So the three garden beds in the back here are also all peppers. So I have serranos over in that bed, but then I have cayennes, bananas, jalapenos, bells, I miss it, paprikas. So I have all of my peppers, okay, so all pepper varieties. I have bell, serrano, paprika, cayenne, banana, and jalapeno. I have five different, I feel like I'm missing one. I think that's right. Also, if you see that um, I burnt my face earlier with my curling iron, I haven't done that in years. Uh, but yeah, I have all of these peppers. Someone might ask like, Brie, why would you be growing so many peppers? Okay, so I like to put back about a year's worth of chili flakes. I use chili flakes in so many different things, especially when it comes to like spicy pickles when cucumbers start producing. I like to dry my own paprika for paprika powder. Same with cayenne, or I just said cayenne chili flakes. I like to freeze bell peppers. I like to dice them, blanch them, throw them in the freezer, throw them in all sorts of soups and stews throughout the year. Um, and yeah, I like to make a lot of salsa as well. And this year I'm trying to at least maybe get like six months worth of salsa out of the garden. We'll see. I'm going to be doing a ton of canning this year. So I'm really, really excited about that. Behind the peppers though, we have my two beds of onions. So I'm excited about the onions. The onions are very interesting. So when I planted out the onions, this whole bed is Australian brown and the Australian brown looked so much better inside. But now that we're outside, my Cabernet red, red my Cabernet red and my Spanish, yellows are looking way better for some reason. So one thing I'm also going to be doing with my onions. So when I did all of my seedlings indoors, I was cutting back the tops of the onions just to help give them stronger bases for transplant. But you can also do that for bigger bulb development. A lot of people swear by it. So I think I'm going to cut half and save half kind of like what I did with the peppers I'm um, top them to see if I get better bulb development that way versus not uh, this year is a big experimental year um, I have a lot more space but I'm also doing a lot more production for saving and canning and all that jazz so we have all that and then I'm sure you see right there a whole bed of celery yes I planted a whole bed of pink celery and it looks great. So actually, let's talk about this bed before we talk about the celery. So these are my potatoes. This is a russet called Gold Rush. My only reasoning behind planting this variety was I liked the song Gold Rush by Taylor Swift. It's like one of my favorite songs. So when I was trying to find a variety, because I have never had luck planting potatoes. Um, I've never tried fully either. This is my first year buying like organic certified seed potatoes. The previous years I've tried to do potatoes. I've used organic potatoes from the store. I've tried to cut them. I did not cut these. I put the potatoes in whole. One of those reasons being is when I did a lot of reading on blight issues with potatoes and also potato disease, a lot of it can be surfaced from the soil. And if you cut your potatoes and you don't let them scab over long enough, it can just introduce a lot. And I was just like, you know what? I have enough potatoes here that let's just plant this bed and experiment. So I'm really excited about this. Uh, so far, so good. If you have any potato advice for me, again, please leave it in the comments below since this is like my first official year planting potatoes. All right, let's move on to celery. Okay, look at that color. You can't tell me that that's not just a beautiful addition to the garden. TikTok has been liking to tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about and I actually planted rhubarb, but uh, no, it's pink celery, guys. So one thing that's really cool about pink celery in particular is it's Chinese pink celery. So it's supposedly supposed to be easier to grow than European. I've never attempted to grow like classic green European celery, but I will say, Chinese pink celery is really easy. It does create thinner stalks, but I almost like that because it it's just a lot easier to chop up and cut again, free storage. I'm trying to get a year's worth here. I do plan on cutting these and allowing them to regrow. One thing you can also do with celery that I find really cool, you can harvest the outside leaves and continue to let the plants grow. So this is a bed I'm going to try to keep all year as an experiment. Celery is also frost tolerant to a degree. So I'm hoping that if I can keep this bed harvestable throughout the entire year maybe i can throw some freeze fabric over it and maybe overwinter it last year that did not 
go as planned. A lot of my celery went to seed, but this area in particular actually shades out midday. This is one of my shadier areas, and that's one reason I planted the celery here in hopes that it won't go to seed and I can potentially do that. Before we move over to tomatoes, I'm skipping over things. We have some nasturtiums. We got a bunch of herbs over here. We got peppermint that I need to start to harvest. Same with sage. Those are both from previous years. And then I have this flower variety called aster, which is supposed to be like a peony type annual that I'm really excited about. I need to get my hands on peonies. I just haven't because I don't really have established space yet for perennials minus that little grow bag, mostly because I don't plan on staying here, but I really love perennials. It makes your life so much easier. Okay, so moving on to the tomatoes. I planted out 10 of the plants I started inside. They look so happy, but one thing I wanna point out is guys, the aphids are already going so crazy. Let me zoom in. The aphids are already going so crazy because we've had such a warm spring. This is even with me spraying a few times with neem. So that's one thing I wanted to note with you guys is if you are a new gardener, make sure you are spraying underneath the leaf. That will help. But yeah, I'm already starting to see pest like crazy, which is just nuts. So one thing I did with this space is I actually planted basil in between each tomato plant. I just, some of them haven't come up yet because I direct seeded, but I also did three successions of tomatoes. So this is all Romas. These are all paste. I do a lot of sauce making. Again, canning purposes here. I'm trying to shoot for a year's worth of sauce. I have, third no, I have 35 Romas over here, which is my biggest, like it's this is a huge amount compared to previous years so again salsa tomatoes i'm planning on canning a ton so that's one reason i'm excited about having multiple secessions so i have cuttings over here that are ooh 10 weeks after this and then i also have direct sown tomatoes so i'm hoping that i can get tomatoes at least through october and really get that amount that i'm hoping i also have my grow bags over here planted with tomatoes as well so i'm sure you're wondering about what this is because i'm sure you saw it at the beginning it's my chicken coop we're not done with it yet we're going to be getting it done this week I'm so excited to be moving the girls out. They needed to be moved probably two weeks ago, but this has taken us a little longer than expected, but there's your sneak peek. I don't wanna show you anymore, but we also have this space over here, guys, that I have not planted out yet. Mostly just the chicken coop has taken a lot of our time. This space over here, if you remember last year, I did an A-frame trellis. This is where my second round of pumpkins is going to be. And then I have my hoops over here. We had a hoop bender from Bootstrap Farmer that we bent these metal hoops. I'm planning on doing my little hoop house with a zucchini like I've done all of the years over here as well. Then I'm also going to be able to direct sow a bunch over here. I plan on doing another round of sunflowers for sunflower heads for the chickens. So yeah, I'm really pumped about this space. And since it's delayed it'll be nice that I haven't been able to get the entire garden planted out yet this space will be a little delayed again so yeah but guys I cannot wait to get the girls out here that will be next week's video I can't wait to show you guys the chicken coop in detail but I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the garden in full detail today again I do this every month and since I did this mid-May we're gonna shoot for like mid-month every month which really makes me excited i can't wait to show you guys the progression in a one month's time especially if we stay warm like this this garden is going to explode but thanks for joining today i'll see you guys all next week bye